I'd now like to invite um, the expert panelists. Uh, we have Hokan Kingsted, the chairman of Sweden India Business Council, Shankar Subramaniam, director, Digital Advisory Europe, Digital Manufacturing Services, Industry 4.0, IoT, LT Technology Services, and Verena Adam Haidt from Senior Business Developer from Swedish Energy Agency for your quick reflections. Thank you very much, Sanyu. Uh, first of all, I could start with, it took 10 years to develop 5G. Uh, I'm not surprised. It takes a long time to develop things, you know. We, we have a certain reflection on that it will go fast, but it, it normally takes time. Second reflection is uh, the four points in the four point the indus zero uh, industry development is uh, uh, driving uh, digitalization. Could we add fossil free to that framework? Because we are standing in to move now to step into total new change. Uh, and fossil free need to be addressed. That's my second uh, 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 reflection. We ha I have seen so many uh, digital factory models over the years. Now it's starting to, to, to boil down to be something really, which is very promising. I'm really uh, interested to see what is happening in here. Uh, thirdly, it's about people. We need to have attractive production lines. That means we need to have hormonize the working lines and think about that. Uh, I remember for some time ago we talked about minds to machine. Mm. Now we talk about artificial intelligence, but still we haven't done mind to machines, an attractive working place. I think I start with that and then leave it over to you. Yes, I think you said it almost all, um, from having no digitalization to can't think of anything else than digitalization that is all around. So that's very fascinating, uh, I guess. And I personally am very happy that we spoke about competence and people that I mentioned already um, earlier. So I think we have a new red thread, not so much walk the talk uh, any longer, but still value chain, supply chain, and now the digital thread. Uh, so I think we'll hear more about this. And uh, from um, our perspective, another comment, uh, you were into fossil free, and I want to stress the energy aspect, um, because uh, we spoke about that digitalization is an enabler of uh, energy efficiency and resource efficiency. And on the other hand, we heard about uh, electrification, which requires more electricity. So there's a connection to energy with the whole area of digitalization, I think. Sure. I think uh, if I put it in a nutshell in terms of the takeaway, what I saw from the panelists, you know, what they were talking about, uh, the key thing is uh, definitely, you know, I heard uh, uh, people talking in terms of the engineering and the manufacturing world, you know, not really, you know, intersecting. And digitalization is something which brought in that intersection. And it helps in terms of, you know, creating that closed loop feedback. Now, to run this industry for, people started having a fear initially that, you know, there could be, uh, the workers, you know, going away, but it is not so. People are the pilots to run this, in, you know, industry for. So it is all about, you know, unlearning and, you know, doing, a, you know, skillful reskilling in a perspective. That's very important, and that we heard it from, uh, you know, Jessica and others as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's where in the operator 4.0 comes into play. And uh, the other part is, uh, I, at least everybody is realizing that uh, the digital thread, right from the design till the aftermarket, where they are able to look at uh, the product being intelligent and the manufacturing becoming intelligent in terms of the production lines and that's something you know designed to aftermarket and also from a shop floor to the top floor uh, that is something you know getting realized more and more uh, as we see of course the adoption initial adoption was a little slower but then i think uh, uh, as peter mentioned earlier the pandemic has really you know helped in terms of you know fast tracking these and that has really helped. That's what you know. I would put it across. And uh, more and more, we are seeing. We being a service provider from an engineering, uh, you know, uh, background, I think we are seeing a lot of companies, especially in the manufacturing area, you know, getting into these. And you know, we are helping in that area. Mm, good. Uh, what do you think about the global value chain and transport chains now after the pandemic situation? Uh, it, it should be easier to move production from one factory to another, but it isn't because we, we may have the same machine set, but we have different people and we have different skill set. 
uh, to be flexible in next pandemic, that will happen, of course, uh, we need to move uh, production faster from one country to another. What's your take on that? Yeah, that's where, you know, we saw a lot of uh, actions in terms of the line transfer and plant transfer mm -hmm. and, you know, going local in terms of the supply chain itself. Uh, and the way we are looking at this is uh, uh, in terms of, um, um, you know, repurposing those lines uh, for you know, some of the customers in terms of, you know, bring, uh, you know, so that they are able to see the future of tomorrow and, you know, help them in terms of getting that baseline ready so that, you know, they are not able to, you know, uh, they are able to sustain in terms of the next pandemic, if at all, it, you know, if it is there. Mm. So that's something we are. Verena, any take on that? No, I think we're fine. Okay, okay.